the food should poison in prevention. Um, uh, and I'm going to share with you uh, 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 some of our experiences in uh, managing uh, 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 a, a epidemic that was uh, when, we, when Andrew, Prof. Andrew Dawson came to Sri Lanka in 2004. So, uh, I work in three. I mean, I work in three institutes: University of Paravani, that's where I work. Uh, that's where Health and Clinical Toxicology Research Collaboration is housed, and uh, where we did most of this work that I'm going to talk to you about. And also, uh, teaching hospital Paravani, um, where there's a dedicated toxicology unit, um, there uh, uh, with an ICU, open an ICU, um, and there is a dedicated team, a trained team of doctors and nurses who um, look after patients uh, who come with poisoning. And yeah. thank you. So uh, <coughs> before we move on, now let's have a look at the, the global uh, story of suicides. There are about 800,000. Uh, death from suicide each year. Uh, well, unfortunately, about 30% of these deaths are due to pesticides. And this, uh, the, 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 the world map redrawn the proportion of deaths of uh, suicide, as I will show you, uh, shows that, you know, while come this, these deaths occur in, 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 in the countries where we live, uh, about 40% of these deaths occur in, in, in Asia. Uh, suicide was always there uh, in this country, uh, but since the uh, Green Revolution, uh, when pesticides were introduced in this country, there was a sharp rise in uh, death from suicide. Uh, rates increased to about 27 to 100,000 population in 1976. Uh, and then there was a steep rise thereafter, and it plateaued uh, to uh, at about 57 deaths. Uh, per 100,000 population between 1980 and 1995. So, clearly, the, the, the death rate from uh, poison increased uh, after, uh, at the onset of the Green Revolution, where the unlimited uh, pesticides were imported in this country. Uh, in the 90s, we were actually known as the suicide capital of the world. Uh, we had about 47 uh, deaths per 100,000 population per year. And there were about 24,000 deaths between 1994 and 1996 due, due to uh, uh, suicides. And unfortunately, uh, about 80% of these deaths were due to pesticides. So poisoning uh, is synonymous with pesticide for poisoning in this country. Now, what, why is this? Uh, this was the further studies done by our group, and it showed that um, the, the way when somebody wants to commit suicide, the agent was found within the home in most of these instances. Very rare people would go out <coughs> uh, to shop and buy pesticides or, or medicine or whatever. Um, in the majority of the cases, uh, the agent was found within the house. And we also found that there's very little planning actually. You know, majority of majority of those who took uh, uh, pesticide or medicine or, or a plant poison, you know, plan very little. Uh, maybe uh, maybe yes, under an hour. So there's no you know majority of them have this intense desire uh, to kill themselves or attempt self harm, and then you know the agent is found within the house. So I'm sure this would have been discussed in the morning uh, about injury prevention. This is uh, this is the added matrix of uh, suicide prevention. To prevent injury and suicide, you need to, um, um, in, especially for suicide prevention, we need to uh, address these three areas. Better treatment, uh, then we should, um, as Andrew mentioned in his talk, we, we control purchase, and we could also 
told them better. And of course, finally, uh, regulation of pesticides, uh, where we uh, restrict access to highly toxic pesticides in the market. So when, when uh, SACTEC began its work uh, in 2004, uh, pesticides were imported based on the WHO classification uh, of pesticides. There were uh, four classes, and these classes, so they were classified according to the rat toxicity, the infinity of rats. And, and uh, even before any data was available uh, in the early 90s, uh, some pesticides were banned. Just because the clinicians who were looking after these patients thought that you know, they could do very little about some of the pesticides. Uh, most patients who took these poisons could not make it to the hospital. They died at home or they died on the way to a hospital. So some physicians uh, who were treating these patients were feeling really helpless and suggested, well, I think media, use media to, uh, 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 to pro uh, propagate this, uh, the toxicity on these pesticides, the idea of uh, uh, of of banning these pesticides, and then the government took it upon and banned uh, class one pesticides, and with that you can see that there was a sharp reduction of, uh, of, of uh, number of suicides in this country soon after the bans. So South at South Asian clinical toxicology study that are found in two thousand and four, our vision was to read reduce deaths uh, and illness caused by poisoning saved by suicide and self harm in South Asia. And our mission was to establish uh, Sri Lanka as a regional hub for medical research and professional training in toxicology and toxicology. So we started uh, this large cohort uh, uh, of patient database uh, in several uh, provinces in leading hospitals uh, and we recruited all these patients who came with the poisoning. And what we found uh, through this data collection was that the WHO classification was actually misrepresentative. Some of the poisons that were labeled, labeled as less toxic were extremely toxic to humans. And we also identified that uh, three pesticides uh, accounted for about 60% of deaths uh, in this study. And then, uh, we did a little bit you of know, modeling exercise um, and it showed that if there were no bans, the overall case value that was for, for 10.3. But if if the bans were uh, introduced and all those patients shifted to uh, 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 a less toxic substitute, less, less toxic pesticide, the case of value would have been even lesser at a 4.7%. Or if they shifted to the highest uh, toxic remaining substitute, you would have been still less than about 7%. And this data, this data was presented uh, to the Pesticide Technical Advisory Committee and, and they banned these three pesticides. And what was its effect? These bans, uh, the three pesticides, Harapa, Dilata, and Bentan, led to a sharp reduction of uh, uh, pesticide-related deaths in the country. That that shows the the the, the red boxes. Uh, sorry, the the blue boxes show. Uh, that's right. The red boxes show the pesticide suicide rate, and this is when the bans occurred. And you can see that uh, the suicide rate dropped thereafter. But uh, surprisingly, we also noted that the overall suicide mortality also dropped uh, uh, since the bans were introduced. Uh, and one might wonder whether, whether, the, whether these bans have an adverse effect on uh, agricultural output. And these are the ag ag agricultural output that we have shown, and there's, a, there's no reduction in the agricultural output. Uh, so this is a, a success story where we showed that uh, redu reducing access or banning highly toxic pesticides can bring about a sharp decline in uh, death rate. 
in the country. Then uh, we, it's, we conducted, uh, we carried this uh, study forward and it took quite a lot of patients. We, by the time we stayed over some time, we about 35,000 patients. Now we are uh, we have gone beyond 100,000. And what we noted was that uh, the case fatality of those non banned pesticides, those are less toxic pesticides, was also uh, reducing. And this may be because of improved care. Uh, and we, to this effect, uh, uh, improving medical care and toxic body services, uh, our group has done quite a lot of work. We have trained about 50 postgraduate students, both in MS and students and PhDs. We have built research infrastructure in many institutions, including <coughs> Paralympia, and we have published numerous uh, scientific uh, publications, over 500 papers, and we keep getting uh, that the research done. So this, the, the toxicology knowledge base increased in the country. This, uh, uh, our group was able to contribute to uh, uh, kind of guideline development of managing pesticide poison, poisoning uh, management. And this, there was an MSC toxicology that started by the PGM and uh, our group contributed. And there was propagation of this evidence uh, through wiki talks. So all this would have contributed to improved knowledge and there, uh, by improving the care provided for these patients. Now, we also wondered, hindering access uh, to pesticides and other poisons at home uh, could bring about reduced uh, suicide rates. So, the, so our group, uh, through a research drive, uh, studied uh, whether uh, safe, whether safe storage of pesticides in a lockable box uh, can bring about a reduced rate of pesticide poisoning deaths. So this study happened in, in Mahavali H area. Uh, we included, this was a cluster randomized control clinical trial. To one group we gave these boxes and to the other group we did not provide these, these boxes. And there were about uh, 225,000 viewers in this study. And what we found at the end was that there was no difference in the case of the, the, the risk of suicide uh, due to pesticides in this, in this area. Um, so the Comprehensive Mental Health Action Plan of WHO uh, voted the set target to reduce suicide rate by 10% by the year 2020. And Sri Lanka has reduced it by 70% through these measures that I told you about. And this is estimated to have saved uh, about 93,000 lives. I think it's about 100,000 lives now. And there was an award presented uh, to Sri Lanka uh, on this achievement. But we need to improve this further, and this is how usually patients present to pesticide poisoning. This is the patient who's often a fast with pesticide poisoning, with a uh, lot of uh, froth coming from the mouth, and this, this patient's lungs are flooded with uh, fluid. And, and the current management of pesticide poisoning is uh, there is a sprayer, then he takes his poison and falls sick. Somebody knows, notices this patient uh, being so sick. And if patient is transferred to a local hospital, from there, the patient will be transferred to a secondary hospital. So what we wonder, wow, uh, wonder is whether if we could treat this patient in the village itself, in the village itself, uh, by means of, uh, by some means, if we can delay, uh, if we can prevent the delay of this patient getting to a hospital after poisoning. We are trying out, uh, auto injector, especially for uh, organ fossil insecticide poisoning. Uh, so, this is an auto injector that contains atropine. So, we're trying to see even how feasible it is uh, 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 auto injector to be used in the mid uh in case of organ fossil insecticide poisoning. So, so, in summary, the holistic approach. Uh, uh, with evidence, the one that works best is restricted access to pesticides. 
Um, you need sound data, uh, sound meticulously collected data, and that such data should be produced to the policy chain, policy makers, and they will effect bans. And uh, what we propose is to ban all of those pesticides that has a that have a case fatality ratio of more than five percent. We should ban all those uh, uh, pesticides. I think we will be able to bring bring down uh, the case fatality from pesticide policy. Then, of course, a better treatment, uh, further education to edu to uh, uh, multiple sources, uh, undergraduate, postgraduate curricula. Uh, if we can improve care, uh, we can improve care and prevent deaths from self poisoning, and of course, improve facilities uh, at various uh, hospitals, ETUs, PCUs, and general medical wards. And if you can have a dedicated toxicology ward in at least uh, one hospital in a province, we might be able to improve care. Um, I'd like to acknowledge a lot of people uh, who contributed uh, to uh, our efforts uh, over the last so many years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gavaramana. Yeah. We will move into the next speaker and have the discussion at the end of.